what I'll do is I'm just going to tack this floor down with these inch and a half or inch and three quarter screws. So I have a one inch subfloor underneath this, underneath that blue skin. So I'll screw this down every maybe two feet. But what I'll do first is take a three quarter or one inch spade bit, drill a hole a quarter inch through, maybe three places across the board, screw down uh, the screws, inch and three quarter inch screws, and then put hardwood dowels in and cut that off flush with a flush cut saw, like a little flush hand saw, and then um, sand the whole thing down and then put a bunch of coats of probably a stain and a clear coat. Unfortunately, I stained this one a nice bright red color with some blood by using this. I don't have um, any power here. And I think what I'll do, well, I have that freezer downstairs, but I have it just connected directly to a 12 volt bat battery. Um, have, it's been cloudy for too many days. I have no power in that uh, little power bank. So what I need to do is get the full system set up. So I think next week that's what I'll do take some time to get the entire cabin wired up. Get the solar panels out in the metal and wait for the racking to come, but I can at least lay them down or prop them up against something for now. It's just four panels, 320 watts each. So I can get that, uh, get some power generated anyway. And then I can use a drill to, screw gun and drill to do this work here. Just gonna move this into, well, not its final place, but over here, it's over there, while I work in that area. Because I have a limited amount of space in here, obviously. And I have a bunch of stuff, like tools and insulation and stuff in that corner. Now I need to move it out of there so I can get uh, that floor laid all the way across, instead of coming partway across and then having an odd number of cutoffs. I'm going to put a, put a 10 foot piece or whatever I have and do it like an 8 or 9. Start with the cutoff and keep going that way. So I gotta get the cabin completely emptied. Maybe this will go there or there probably for now. Yeah maybe there so I can set a bed up here. it for the roof structure. Might put a couple more corner braces in in there and then I think in that two or three ends maybe even up against the wall here but anyway that's it. That's gonna hold the roof up. I did decide to order the metal roof so I haven't heard back but I'm hoping within two weeks so by the end of October I'd like to have a full metal roof on there and I decided I am gonna at least frame in and, and roof the dormer that would be the what well the dormer on the actual cabin which would end up tying into the sloped roof that's going to be on the breezeway in the future not sure if i can do the breezeway right now maybe the dormer's up here and the and it's going to sink the five inches i keep mentioning this cabin's likely to to settle if the dormer roof's kind of built like that and this is higher it'd just be a tie-in between the two and then they come down and meet at some point in the future. Problem being that I would have to like guess that exact settle settlement um, drop. So I, I don't know if I can get that that accurate, but maybe there'll always just be a little rubber tie-in between the two. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get that done before winter and get the footings in for the for the outdoor kitchen as well. Other than that, I think I'm ready for winter more I'm gonna mill all that stuff but I can do that anytime for the kitchen and then the sauna in the future as well this and I am going to bring the mill up from down there by the greenhouse get it up here um, anyway the reason I turned the camera on to talk to you is that in there just about to cook um, brunch lunch and I could feel the breeze all the way up the stove which is nice it was two degrees this morning which is like, what, 36, 38 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. And it's up to 14 almost now Celsius, which is what, 58? 
the high is only going to 17. But point being is that there's a really nice breeze coming in and it's hitting all the way back there. Um, I had concerns, and a lot of you did, about me putting in this fixed window, these two fixed windows here, which I wouldn't have done if I had better windows. I've been searching for a few years, um, and starting with the old cabin, just buying what I, just buying whatever used windows we could find that would be appropriate for any of the buildings. Used a bunch on the old cabin, some on the sauna, some of these matching ones on the workshop. And then I have a few more left over, different sizes, mainly like that size there, which is 30 inches in height actually by like four feet wide, or no, five feet wide. Not sure what I'll do with those. And then I have one massive window. Anyway, I end up putting these fixed ones in because I like the look of them. They're wood inside and out. And they came from a historic building in a, a nearby town. So I wanted to use them, but I would have preferred at least double pane, maybe triple pane, and or opening windows. And there, it's none of those, none of that. It's a fixed single pane. So it's going to be a bit of a concern in the winter, but I was concerned about not having enough airflow in here. But there's only a slight breeze, like the trees are barely moving out there. But because that's like southwest, the wind tends to funnel down this valley and then up into the forest here because of the clearing I created. And it comes straight into the cabin and goes out the operating windows. So I've got four operating windows, one up in the loft, two on the back, which one will be the bathroom, one will stay open as the living room, and then this bedroom window. Uh, that's a temporary window, but the bedroom will also have two operating things. I always like to have two operating windows or doors in a bedroom so they can just open the, the windows so then leave the screens in and have the air flow through so there's nice air flow for sleeping. So that'll um, be open. And then the breezeway door is still open, but there's two operating windows. So even when I put a door on, that will be good airflow. So that none of that would really work. Although the breezeway window is on this side too, so that can open and go through. But it will only really work if I have a screen door in, on here, which is what I am going to do. I won't bother putting it on this year because winter's coming. So what I will do is build the solid door. So I've got the solid door here, yeah, and then there's enough room in the frame here for a screen door. Solid door, which we're gonna open it this way or this way. And I'm gonna build that over the next couple of days, actually. Um, at least a, a door that well, I'll show you. Show you next week. So the solid door, I can even either open it up against the kitchen cupboards here and counter or up against the bedroom, or not the bedroom, the dining table with the bench, sleeping bench there. If it opened like this, so let me think how that would work for light. For light, it would be better on this side. So the light can come in here all the way to the kitchen, which is my main. Hmm. Thing is, it blocks being able to get onto that bench where if it opens here, it's not blocking anything. It's just the kitchen, like I said. And I think if I do a U-shaped kitchen, it'll come out here. So it'll come up against that. So maybe that's what I'll do. And this year, time of year, when there's no bugs I can leave the door open even without a screen. So lots of airflow. That's what I'm getting at. Anyway, pretty happy with this week. Got the floor in. Um, I'm planning on doweling. So I'll take out the screws that I put in. They're just really there now to hold the floorboards down so they don't warp and cup. Because if I don't do that for sure they're going to start like twisting, especially with the variable heat cooler here warm by the wood stove. It's going to be a lot of movement. It's not tongue and groove, it's just rough boards and uh, rough pine, white pine. And um, you know the gaps are going to keep opening up and closing a little bit. So I don't want them warping. Screwed it down solid or almost solid. Well not really solid because I only put them in mainly at the joint, at the end joint, so close to the ends and then random ones throughout the center. 
but I did chalk a line down the center here, put those screws in. What I'll do is take those out, and as I take them out, I'll drill a bigger hole, like a countersink hole, screw the screws down. This is full one inch, maybe slightly over. That's why you see four on some of the boards. I wrote four fourths, because the mill is set up in fourths, the measurement, so I can do like three fourths or five, six fourths per inch and a quarter, or inch and a half, and so on. So this is slightly over four fourths, as accurate as I could get it. So by putting the screws like at least half an inch in, that'll leave me half an inch, almost, you know, well, pretty well a half inch to put a dowel in and cut that, flush cut that off, glue it in, flush cut it off, and then sand the floor roughly. I don't really care about getting it like, it's not, it's not gonna be like a typical modern home for, <laughs> for flatness and shininess. Still gonna be better than what I had in the old cabin as far as level. But um, and I think I am gonna stain it this time and clear coat it with a, and like an eco product, like a non-gassing, um, a, a safe, um, like non-toxic uh, clear coat, two or three or four coats. Which is gonna be a bit of a pain now that winter's coming. I'm trying to get stuff moved in and get my bed in here, but I'm sleeping in here starting next week. So over there, I think what I'll do is maybe come across this way with the that process, including the stain and the clear coat, come across halfway so I can kind of live on this side and then uh, finish that, that off completely, then move everything back onto that side and then work on this side. That way I can have it all done in the next, say, month. And then I can start building the kitchen and doing everything in once it gets cold and this place is completely airtight. So what am I working on now? I've got Roof structure's done, like I said. I need to board the ceiling out here and then uh, get this door on, get that door on. Put some more insulation around the windows and then probably get the trim done shortly too so I can make it airtight. So I can trim all that off nicely and that off nicely and insulate in there and seal it. And then maybe even caulk the uh, log joints on the outside before winter. Get the uh, wall, outside walls of the bree breezeway done. Insulate the ceiling. Get the boards on the ceiling. Full cathedral ceiling here. Yeah, and then the breezeway too. And then once all of this is weather tight, then I'm moving downstairs and I'll work on the cellar. Get that all insulated, boarded. Shelves built for all the potatoes that are sitting down there now and onions and stuff. And then uh, proper proper staircase. And then start working on the kitchen, table, bed, bathroom, and what else? That's, I guess, it for in here. Fire pit. I'd like to get that fire pit repositioned, centered here. I moved it over because the lack of symmetry was bothering me, so I wanted like dead center. Come out to the, well, you can see I have a rock place there, and Kelly's towing Kelly's is lying there. Hey guy, watching the squirrels, but uh, get the fire pit built there, or at least the stone set up so I can do some cooking there in the winter. Anyway, speaking of cooking, uh, brunch or lunch. So anyway, if you want to watch the full version of this video, see everything I did this week in longer form, and some of the um, I'm going to do some hikes this week, and I can't remember if I got it on the water or not. But anyway, it'll be in the other video on the other channel. So I'll put a link in the description below and a link probably at the end of this video as well. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you back here at the cavern next time. Take care.